Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love and want to get into. Today we will be talking about The Walking Dead Season 9 with a very special 7 Minutes or Less where I rank all 9 seasons of The Walking Dead. And that is what we're going to start off with, all these rankings. So I will be going from the worst to the best with quick commentary about each season. And keep in mind, spoilers abound for the first 8 seasons. Jumping on into this, we have... The Walking Dead Season 7. This season was an absolute dumpster fire after its first two episodes, giving us a shocking and nightmarish first episode revealing who is the victim to Negan's Bat Lucille was not of one, one, but two victims, Abraham and then Glenn. This broke a lot of Walking Dead fans as the viewership, if you watch and look, declined rapidly. This has a lot to do with the treatment of the season before it and during this season, as it was a lackluster build-up, poor execution, too many stories, and awful dialogue. But in a binge-watching experience, I imagine it could be better, but it doesn't change the fact that everything fizzles out by the end. Coming up next is The Walking Dead Season 8. This is a step up from Season 7. But not by much. Sadly, dealing with the reign of Negan and his war against Rick doesn't amount to much after the first few episodes. Things slow down, characters spring up and do nothing. The characters kind of talk down to each other and then by the end there's a climactic battle between Rick and Negan that again fizzles out. There is even, to make matters worse, a dream sequence that looks to be a premonition and is confusing at best because it's coming from Carl and he dies midway of this season. The third runner-up from being better than these last seasons is actually The Walking Dead Season 6. Now, this season started off really strong and extremely intense, leading a herd of walkers away from a town of Alexandria added some true tension and conflict, where this season was at the height of its popularity. Then, it just drops the ball, faking out Glenn's death, only to kill him in the beginning of season 7. They did give us one last hurrah midway of this season, giving us an explosive episode that can get the fans cheering. And a let me cheer a lot too. The finale left us with a cliffhanger that was sort of, eh. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, but this finale leads into season seven, episode one. Here we get a little bit better, and as the rest of you would probably rank this higher, I would stick with my guns and say The Walking Dead Season 3 is definitely in the middle for me. In its junior year of being out, this was trying to find its footing on how it wanted to be for its guaranteed future, but the tone fluctuated throughout its episodes. I found the first episode of the season very lackluster, only having a cameo appearance of a long-awaited character we wanted to see, Michonne. Our group of uh, survivors with Rick kind of take over a prison only to hit many more obstacles as they go along from inside the prison and even out. And the out is the governor. He's definitely a standout and a formidable villain against Rick, but there was just too much buildup in a horrible finale that left a lot to be desired. Moving closer to the better half of these seasons, we have The Walking Dead Season 2. I know. I know, you would probably wholeheartedly disagree with me when, you, when I say this, but I know a lot of fans was bored to death as our group finds themselves at an isolated farm owned by Herschel Green. Tensions rise and fall between Herschel's family and Rick's group, but the real standout here is Rick and Shane. It's the highlight of conflict, and it gives us an emotional and satisfying result. There are so many boring moments with an occasional walker showing up as a cameo appearance and plays out more of a soap opera at times, but when it wants to get very good, it gets good. But I'd be the first to admit, storytelling could have been better. Getting closer to the best, we have The Walking Dead Season 4. I'll say this, the first half of this season, I love with a passion. Flu epidemic, revenge from the governor, impactful deaths with a truly exciting and heartbreaking finale that leads to a very slow and boring second half. Sure, it sets up characters well enough in the second half so you know how they come back together and there's a different dynamic, but it's... Ugh, it's a slow crawl before it's 
before it leaves the terminus. In the home stretch, we have The Walking Dead Season 5. This is truly a solid season, despite a very questionable and somewhat boring mid-season finale. But the emotion is all there with the season having new characters, new stakes that rise and fall with an ever-constant changing story. Rick focuses to keep these members of the group alive during and after Terminus, and that means being ruthless if he has to. The group goes from one place to another, not trusting much only themselves, but when they reach Alexandria, it's definitely a welcome change of pace. Second to last, we have The Walking Dead. Wait for it. Season 9. This season was one hell of a return to form after two lackluster seasons before it. It has definitely made the use of its characters and stays away from standalone episodes that stay just feel like filler. We see some serious cast changes including its main character, Rick Grimes. Negan stands out as a more redeemable villain than an in he is in his past. Michonne is stronger in every moment that she's on screen and the story holds its weight with many characters having a drive and purpose. I couldn't find myself really hating an episode but merely welcoming the fresh new turns, new villains, better treatment. Objectively, this season is definitely better all around. Reaching for the top is of course the Walking Dead Season 1. This is my favorite, hands down, and the only season I've ever given an A plus to. Its season starts off very, very emotional. It's incredibly easy to get into in its first run, and it's what got me into this season more than ever is Frank Darabont himself. He gave you Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, The Mist, and now here comes The Walking Dead. This season is emotionally satisfying, especially even in its sixth episode episode, characters you can get behind, morals are questioned and put to the test without becoming dull or boring. The use of silence is even a shock and awe-inspiring treatment because this was a very tired concept then and now it was brought to life thanks to him and it's a very realistic season at that. And that is why season one is the best season to date for me. Tell me down below, folks, if you agree with my list or unless you disagree. I'd love to know what you think. I would love to see where your ranking differs from mine. Keep in mind, not everyone's perfect. Not everyone has the same mindset as you. So be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. But try to avoid spoilers as best as you can. But nevertheless, we're going to dive into Season 9's review. I thank you all so much for staying in tune for this first half. But now, let's get into this. <laughs> Here we go everyone, another review on The Walking Dead, and God knows where you stand with this show as it used to be the talk on social media for six years. Then the writers and studios and the head honchos lost faith in its fans in its sixth season, giving us some great episodes but ultimately dropped the ball in storytelling and it seemed to just go on autopilot thereafter. And I'm dead serious when I say I hate season 7 with a passion. I would even have to say while it was a well made first episode, I really didn't care for that the day will come where you won't be because of its excessive brutal nature. Season 8 tries to recover from that, but falls down again, acting as if it's exhausted from the source material and seems to want to savor too much in fear of running out of material. Ratings died, reviews were harsh, and people just kind of stopped talking about Walking Dead pretty much altogether. So here we have Season 9, and it has... Oof, a lot of changes, a lot of improving to do, and I know there are a lot of people still loyal to the core with this show, and there's nothing wrong with that, but here I feel like the fans are rewarded with not just better storytelling, but a sharper focus, more potent music to convey the dramatic themes and elements. It takes risks with its casting changes and makes likable characters out of irredeemable ones. I said in my ranking earlier, this is a return to form, and it truly is, but I couldn't explain or expand my ideas that Walking Dead is back because I'd be shouting into an empty room. Well, maybe not too empty, but with people who are just as loyal to the show and continue to love it regardless would be in there. I'd say it's a lot more of an empty room. So that's all well and good, and I'm sure you're wondering what makes this season so good? 
for me at least. What did they do? For one, strengthen storytelling to where emphatic silences don't feel forced or overused to convey a truly impactful moment when we've been waiting for it for a long time. For instance, throughout the seasons, the episodes take moments, a lot of moments, and the times to convey traumatic elements or derive the intensity become more genuinely potent and derive a emotion from you. Rick Grimes' departure episode uses it to its fullest effect, giving you something to root for, someone to worry about, and allows you to care. Another real reason why this is a stronger season is its sense of reality. Its realism is full-on hardcore, in your face, letting you know no one is safe. Not just from death, but but being hurt physically or psychologically. When Rick departs, there is a significant time jump where in the wake of an iconic character's demise, so to speak, is gone, there is an open wound for these characters, Michonne and Daryl. Hell, even Negan himself. Now, while I won't give away when things happen or how, keep in mind some characters that are still left end up losing their lives for the sake of storytelling in its effective state. You can feel the love you have for these characters again. So when you go and you watch this season, you are genuinely shocked, sad, and even mad for such events taking place. Let's talk about the new villain of this season. Alpha. She doesn't show up until the second half of the season, but does indeed pose a credible threat to the communities. Alpha is ahead of her own community that wanders the lands posing as walkers, to which they call themselves the Whisperers. When the communities such as the Kingdom, Hilltop, and Alexandria find them to be a problem, things get, in a lack of a better word, tense for our characters as they drop off like flies, one by one. Especially in the second to last episode, we see the sheer cruelty of Alpha and what she poses against everyone. Alpha can be seen as a run-of-the-mill villain with a chip on her shoulder that has a do-or-die attitude, but she really is a force to be reckoned with, as she is set up quite brilliantly by her daughter in one episode, and then by the end of it, she is seen, you can only imagine what hell she will bring. She is uncompromising, forceful, headstrong, and cruel. She continues to remind us as the audience and the people around her, she isn't playing around. Unlike Negan, who made a bold entrance and then did nothing for two seasons except for heckle and taunt, giving us one or two deaths that were just ultimately unsatisfying. Let's talk about Negan, since he's just been brought up. Yes, he is in this. The time away from him as much as with him is more compelling as ever, knowing what he did in the past, what he does in his present, and we wonder what his future will hold. He spends a lot of time in a jail cell, with one or two characters coming to talk to him, but he still isn't trusted, and for good reason. I won't give anything away, it's just, in general, how unpopular this character is, but yet he is still very much likable. I love Negan as a character because of how irredeemable he is, but yet he is the one person who actually speaks the most truth. He is the show's biggest anomaly, and you will never know what he's going to do next. And for once in this show, they really improve his characterization in this season. In the end, I thoroughly enjoyed Walking Dead Season 9, and for that, I'm going to give it an A-. minus. Definitely a stronger season to date. Alright guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed my review for Walking Dead Season 9. If you're new to my channel, I create all sorts of stuff. Check them out. I do TV shows and movie reviews. Turn on those notifications if you are subbed or want to sub so you don't miss anything. Follow me on Twitter for all the recent updates and random thoughts on movies and TV shows. And with that said, I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.